equivalent fractions. When you use fraction models, you begin to see that some fractions represent the same amount. We call these equivalent fractions. For example, compare 3 sixths and 1 half using less than, greater than, or equal to. We can see that 3 out of 6 represents the same amount as 1 out of 2, so they are equivalent fractions. In the same way, we can see that 2 out of 8 is the same amount as 1 out of 4, so we say they're equal, they are equivalent fractions. So let's model 6 tenths and 3 fifths. We can see that 6 tenths is equivalent to 3 fifths, but we can see, also see that 1 half is greater than actually 3 eighths, so we would say these are not equivalent fractions. To find equivalent fractions mathematically without having to draw a picture, you can multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same amount. For example, 3 fifths, if you multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2, you get 6 tenths, and these are equivalent fractions. We could also go the opposite direction, 6 tenths, if we divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, we get back to 3 fifths. If we wanted to make our own equivalent fractions, we could multiply 5 eighths, as long as we multiply both the numerator and the denominator, make sure you show your work both on the top and the bottom, we would get 10 sixteenths. Or we could make, we could really multiply or divide by any number, so 2, 3, 10, 100, any number really, as long as it's the same in both the numerator and the denominator, so 50 80ths would also be equivalent. You can use your multiplication dot um, or your x for multiplication. Now sometimes you'll have to find a missing number to make your equivalent fractions. You can see here that to go from 7 to 28 we must have multiplied by 4 on the bottom, so let's multiply by 4 on the top, so 12 28ths. Over here we can see that we needed to multiply by 10 to go from 3 to 30, so we need to multiply by 10 in the denominator as well, and we get 30 over 1 hundredths is equivalent to 3 tenths. You can reduce fractions to simplest form. Sometimes we say simplest form or lowest term. We call converting to simplest form reducing. What you want to look for is to find your greatest common factor and use that to divide both the numerator and the denominator. For example, reduce 8 twelfths to simplest form. Step 1, find the GCF of 8 and 12, list your factors of 8, list your factors of 12, and their greatest common factor is 4. So you use that 4 and you divide both the numerator and the denominator by the GCF. 8 divided by 4 is 2, 12 divided by 4 is 3, so the simplest form of 8 twelfths is 2 thirds. So let's give it a try. What is the biggest number that goes into both 8 and 10? It would be 2, so 8 divided by 2, 10 divided by 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Look again to make sure you haven't missed anything, so the simplest form is 4 fifths. 25 sixtieths, what's the biggest thing that goes into both 25 and 60? What is their greatest common factor? And it's 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 60 divided by 5 is 12. Look again to make sure you haven't missed anything, and your answer is 5 twelfths. Now 5 over 1, any number over 1 simplified is just itself. You can think of this as a fraction bar that's also a division bar, 5 divided by 1 is 5, or you can think of this as 5 wholes. Either way, 5 in simplest form. Let's look at 9 over 31. What is the biggest number that goes into both 9 and 31? Well, there isn't, the biggest number is 1. Actually, mathematically, that's how you know you're in simplest form, because their greatest common factor is 1. So we would say this is in simplest form.